Hello, fellow students of Jewish history. If you're like me, you're following the news from Ukraine very carefully. And you'll see that one of the figures that frequently appears in uh, the news commentary is one Vitaly Klitschko, who is the mayor of Kiev. And he provides some very you know, insightful observations as to what was happening in Ukraine's capital city. And as I was watching him, I began to suspect, you know, that he just seems like certain aspects of his presentation are characteristically Jewish. So I thought I'd look a little further into it. And sure enough, there is a Jewish backstory to Vitaly Klitschko. It's quite fascinating. It says a lot as well about the Ukrainian Jewish past and I think also about the Ukrainian Jewish future. So I read that Leslie Weiss, who is the deputy director of the National Coalition Supporting Eurasian Jewry, recently gave an interview in which he said, but as you know, Ukraine is led by a Jewish president. Of course, she's referring to Volodymyr Zelensky. She continues, the defense minister is Jewish, as is the president's chief of staff. Many members of the cabinet are Jewish. The mayor of Kiev, Klitschko, tells us about his Jewish grandmother every time we see him. And that is, in fact, the story. His father's mother was Jewish, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how that affected him in a moment. Um, so that would make his father certainly Jewish by traditional standards. Uh, it would not make Klitschko himself Jewish by traditional standards, which regards matrilineal descent as what determines Jewish status. Of course, there are different opinions in uh, 21st century America, but that's a matter of some controversy. At any rate, Klitschko does not personally identify as Jewish. Um, his wife is not Jewish as well, but nevertheless, he is not ashamed of his Jewish background. In fact, he has mentioned in interviews that he's very proud to have Jewish ancestry. He's a very impressive figure overall. Uh, he is a world heavyweight boxing champion. He holds multiple titles. Uh, he is the current mayor of Kiev, as I mentioned, and articulate in at least three languages, Russian, Ukrainian, and English, although sometimes his uh, statements in English tend to be a little bit pungent and colorful. And there are three things about him that really made me think that he's got to have some kind of Jewish story going on. The first is that he is highly educated. Uh, this is very typical for Jews, particularly those living in urban environments. He holds a Kandidat Nauk degree, which is sort of like a, a PhD assistant professor level in the United States. Uh, he wrote a dissertation on boxing. He is a polyglot, right, speaking multiple languages with considerable fluency. That's also very characteristic of many Jews. And thirdly, and this is the one that really did it for me, he listens to his mother. His brother is also world champion boxer, yet they have never fought publicly, maybe in private, I don't know. And the reason they have never had a professional fight together is because their mother promised them not to do so. And the fact that he listens to his mother all of a sudden makes me think, hmm, this is someone we should listen to a little bit more carefully. Now, we should not be put off by the fact that he is a professional boxer because, after all, there is a very long tradition of Jewish activity in the martial arts. Uh, Daniel Mendoza was one of the most famous of the pioneers of the pugilistic sport. Uh, his years are 1764 to 1836, and he really developed a lot of techniques and that, that apparently went into what are considered the standard elements of modern boxing today, his class. So the idea of Jews being very physical and being active specifically in martial arts is, is nothing new. But there's a fascinating interview that I listened to recently uh, that uh, Vitaly Klitschko gave with this journalist, Dmitry Gordon, and it was fascinating. It's really worth listening to. Even if you don't understand Russian, you can like put on the subtitles and kind of figure out what's going on. I strongly recommend that you zip to 1125, time marker 1125, and then you'll hear him in his own words. And what he describes there is how uh, his father was a career soldier. He was in the Soviet military and, and constantly moving around to many different bases. He kept his Jewish identity on the down low because of the reality of Soviet anti-Semitism, which was particularly prevalent in the military. But at home, they frequently spoke about his mother, who was Jewish, and during the Holocaust, uh, she was hidden in a chest by her husband during all of these Nazi 
searches that would go on during the occupational period. And this went on for months and months. And uh, Klitschko speaks about the tremendous impact this made on him as a child. And, and I, ironically, there are elements of his past through uh, his mother's side that relate to the Holodomor, the great terror famine that occurred in 1932-33 under Stalin, and on his father's side to the Holocaust. And he relates to the Holocaust in a distinctly Ukrainian manner, specifically through this mixed heritage. Uh, he remarks in this interview how very proud he is that Yad Vashem has a record of his Jewish family and the tribulations that they went through through the Holocaust. And he poses in this interview a challenge for himself and for future mayors of Ukraine. He speaks very forcibly here. He says that in Jerusalem, there are places like Yad Vashem, right? It's very, one of the world's greatest centers for the memorialization and the study of the Holocaust. He says, in Jerusalem, there was no Holocaust. In Washington, in Los Angeles, there was no Holocaust, right? These are both cities which have very famous Holocaust museums and research institutes. How is it, he continues, that in Babinyar, right, in the middle of Kiev, where 100,000 people were shot, almost nothing appeared there for 80 years. Tiny memorial, which incidentally was recently bombed by the Russians. In Ukraine, he continues, the places of executions are not marked, and many people go on picnics there and walk their dogs on mass graves. And so he sets for himself and for future mayors the challenge of putting energy into developing an understanding of the Holocaust in Ukraine. I think that's extremely important. It's ironic that he gave this this interview in November of 2021. And just a few months later, of course, he would be embroiled in a war, which in many ways bespeaks many of the tragedies and the cruelties that were seen during the Einsatzgruppe and massacres, the so-called Holocaust by bullets in places like Bucha. And, and, but that's getting beside our point right now. He also notes that at Babiyar, many people who pulled the triggers also had family values, also loved their children, yet they could shoot the children of defenseless people. They could shoot the elderly. And he asks Pachamu, why? And he says, it's important for us to answer this question because the world is very fragile. So a fascinating individual who in many ways speaks to the Ukrainian Jewish past, which is far more complex than most people really realize. And also, hopefully, for an optimistic Ukrainian Jewish future, where we're looking towards ways of understanding this complex and very difficult and painful past. So Vitaly Klitschko, I can say he is definitely not a lightweight. He is actually a heavyweight. Thank you very much for watching this brief video.